You got to be that cool. You got to be that good. You got to be that exciting. Thank you for watching this video on YouTube. If you like it, you know the deal. Subscribe, hit the button, hit the bell, do the like, do the heart, the whole thing, man. Okay, sports. This is in that first book, okay? Let's go through a couple, all functional training. There's no, there's no nothing here. So if you have the ability to train um, a soccer team, you know, sometimes you maybe have a nephew, maybe you have... Uh, your girlfriend has a, has a son or a daughter, or boyfriend has a you know, son or a daughter. They're in, they're in school, and you get an in with the team. Trainers, if you want to get in all right, and grow your business, volunteer to any coach around to warm up or train their team for free. It takes you a half hour, two or three times a week. All right? With trip and all, you're looking at about an hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half tops. When you talk to 20 kids, you're not talking to 20 kids. You're talking to those 20 kids, whoever those kids talk to next day at school, and you're talking to at least 40 parents. Sometimes, you know, parents have been separated, so you, now it's two homes instead of one. Maybe mom drops them off, dad picks them up, so it's two homes. You're talking to how many siblings? So it's not 20 athletes. And if you, you guys, are in your 20s and 30s, you are gods to a high schooler, or especially a middle schooler. You are men and women. And if your muscles are big, remember when you were 12, 13, 14, what you thought of somebody that was half built, that was 40, half built, you were like, so anything you say, and especially if you can outrun them, so remember, you have a chance to role model these kids. You have a chance to impress them. You got to be the movie, okay? That's what I tell my trainers. You got to, Nick and I were talking about this. You got to be the movie. You got to, your delivery system, like he says, your delivery system has to be so exciting that you are just like the Equalizer 2 movie. You see it on Sunday, what happens on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You tell everybody at work, you call your friends, you call your family, you haven't seen Equalizer 2? Oh my God, look, check Equalizer, and you start, you start selling the movie. Like you had a vested interest in it. No, no, go to Netflix or go to get number one because you got to see number one so you can catch number two. And oh, by the way, I trained a Friday that's in one of the scenes. You got to see it. And you know, the funny thing is, I'm not, I'm not going to give it away, but you know, they proceed to give it away. You got to be that cool. You got to be that good. You got to be that exciting. All right? And you can be very exciting coaching lunges. You can do it funny. You can do it seriously. You can do it with combination. You can crack a joke and then say, all right, all right, here we go. And you can give them that serious stuff. And you can scream, not loud, but at the right time. Here we go. Come on, come, one, 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 go. You know, like, bop, up, and then, boom. And then, all right, great job. Now, slow it down. Look, and you get it, boom, boom. You got to do that just like a movie. Okay, you got to be that music that gets you ready for stuff. You got to keep that, that, that uh, crescendo and, and that dynamics of quiet and then loud and then quiet. That's got to be your training session. So people talk about you. This, these programs are awesome. They're all in the um, functional training book. And these are all things you can do with minimal equipment. So these are things you can do with medicine balls, bands, body weight. That's it. Maybe dumbbells. Okay. So you look at this football power and power endurance. And you can see I'm doing biplexes, four biplexes, five plus five, kettlebell, single arm swing. You don't want to do kettlebell, single arm swings, do a dumbbell, okay? You don't have a dumbbell, you don't have a kettlebell, and you want to do um, a biplex for, for legs, okay, what, what can we do? All right, do 10 squats, 10 jump squats. Is it perfect? No. Will it get them faster? Yeah. How about kids that haven't done anything? Turn, turn them into Superman. So this is an example Okay, but you can substitute, all right? Staggered stance press to explosive push-up. If you don't have, okay, a, a band, then do crossover push-ups, rest, explosive push-ups. Is it perfect contrast system? No, it's not perfect. Is it better than doing nothing? Hell yeah. Is it an opportunity to get a kid in shape? Yeah, is it an opportunity to be that movie? Yeah, is it an opportunity for that kid to talk to the parent? Yeah. How do you use these things and to, to, to do business? Hey, coach, let me come in for a month. 
Let me train your kids twice a week. You're going to do this twice a week, power endurance, right before the season. Okay? Here it is. We have this as part of our marketing. It's our 28-day marketing. So you go in. First, first week, hi, how are you doing? First week, your job is to get park cues on everybody. Why? Because emergency contact is the parent. You need that. Okay? So in comes the second week. By the second week, you know all the parents. You know all the kids. Hey, guys, uh, Saturday, we're going to have, if it's a volleyball team, vertical jump. If it's basketball, vertical jump. If it's batting, we're going to have a throwing program, whatever. We're going to have a pro, we're going to have a workout at IHP or your gym. We're going to have a workout to work with the equipment that pros work with or to have a, do a program that the pros work with. So they give, you give them two weeks, boom, boom, boom. Second Saturday, they come to IHP. They go back to school. They see IHP, they see the equipment, holy jeez. They push the car, they did the tire, they do all the funky stuff that you do that they've never seen, boom. Cool. Now, the next week, you're going to get the parents' information. Why? Because I want to send a, uh, a thank you letter to all the parents. You have form letters that you write them up. Miss so-and-so, I've, I've had the pleasure of training so-and-so and so-and-so. I want you to know it's been a great pleasure. I've seen great improvements here and there and here and there. Two weeks or two Saturdays from now, we're going to have an open house so you can see Johnny work out with the team with the professional equipment we have at IHP. So there's your 28-day program. First week, get to know everybody. Second week, by the end of the second week, they're coming to your place. Okay? Third week, contact the parents, thank you, congratulate them on the great kid they have and all that stuff. Fourth week, open house, see your kid work out with the professional equipment or see your kid do the professional jump program that some of the pros are doing at our place. They're doing, they did fantastic two weeks ago, and we want to encourage the kids and show you how they're doing. That way, you get a double hit into your place. You don't have a place? Fine. Then do a workout Saturday on the field. Bring donuts, bring whatever, you know? Bring something for the kids, bring something for the parents. If you have your own little tent and whatever, come on, do the show. Okay, do the show. Have some Gatorade. Do do something. That's your, your your. What, what are you selling? You're selling your eight week SAQ camp. It's 150 bucks. You want 20 kids? Do the numbers. Twice a week. One hour. Come on. That that's business. And this is how you use your programming to do philanthropy. But you got to tie the philanthropy in to some kind of business opportunity. You're not lying. You're producing a great, you're, you're, you're giving a great product. You're producing a fa fantastic result. Every kid is going to benefit. And if nobody signs up, you got 20 kids. Maybe out of the 20, all 20 don't come, but maybe eight come. Maybe 12 come. Now you got 12 kids that know about your place. And if they're not of age, the parents are going to drop them off, and then they're going to pick them up. And then two weeks from that first workout, the parents are invited. We've even had parents uh, versus kids uh, competition. So, you know, you got the little 10-year-olds and 12-year-olds. I've had to go in there and help them with the tug of war so, they, so the kids won. And when they're doing relays, you get in front of the parents. You obstruct the view of the parents. You knock the ball down so the kids win. And it becomes a super fun, fun thing. So think about how your programming can be used to market your services. Okay, so there's an example. All right, so you got a little band row, overhead slam, biplex number four. Uh, band short rotations with throws, easy, done deal. Okay, tennis, okay. Band and pulley, low to high chop, boom, diagonal, kind of like this loading pattern, all right. Single arm diagonal uh, fly rotation. So single ladder, boom. We have variations of two-handed, diagonal, one arm, it kind of looks like a throw. Uh, uh, awesome for surfing. The surfers use the long levers to move. So you just take dumbbells and you have all sorts of patterns. So, uh, uh, uh. You have two arm and you have single arm. And you even have a little bit more specialized. Uh, what is this? This is an anterior reach with a little dumbbell, you know, to show the, show the cord, just that movement. Bah, open up, serape. Close, serape. Open up, serape. Close, serape. Okay? Triplex number two, kettlebell lateral reaching lunge. Boom, boom, T push up with a staggered stance bent over a single arm row. 
Bah, bah, bah. You don't have that, put a band low and you do a low row. You can, you can load up a duffel bag with bands and everything that says uh, kettlebells, find a way to do it with bands. Find a way. Swing, how can you do it with bands? Well, I don't know, man, maybe, maybe you know, do one of these. You've seen that exercise? It's kind of weird. I don't like it, so I wouldn't be one teaching it because I'll probably look silly doing it. So, but I'll, I'll, I'll do something else. So I go, ah, single arm. Jesus, I don't know what the hell to do. You know, you know what? I'll do double power. I'll do medicine ball throw, five, and then I'll do five verticals. I don't have nothing to swing with. Or do chop, heavy, take 10 pounds, take a rock, or take heavy medicine balls, do a chop, then ha, ah, ah, ha, verticals. Find a way, find a way, get close, close enough. But then, core, X-ups, stability ball rollouts. If there's no rollouts, no stability ball, no problem. You walk them out, you walk them back. You walk them out, walk them back, <laughs> that's a walkout instead of a rollout. It saves you a stability ball. You can do it on the field, you can do it on the basketball court. All right? And vibration plate, throw. If you, uh, blade, if you have the blade, I don't have a blade. Then you take a little dumbbell. I put some stuff in there, so if you were in a gym like this, and you bought little gadgets, you could do all of this. So you don't need big equipment. If you don't have a blade, make do with a small dumbbell. And if not, body weight them. Huh? Boom, boom. So it's a speed, anterior reach, staggered stance. Do 25, 30 of them and see, and see what happens to this bud. I'm telling you right now, you're gonna light it up. You don't think that would help a kid? 15 year, years old for running and, pff, I'm telling you man, you'll bust the move. It's gonna be awesome. Soccer, okay, single, bell, uh, single uh, leg RDL, staggered stance press, okay, staggered stance compound row. So you've got a lot of stuff happening here for the back, for the back, hamstring, hamstring, hamstring. Triplex, staggered stance uh, contralateral uh, deadlift with, with a, a, a kettlebell or, or dumbbell, here's with the band. Okay, I don't have this, fantastic. Both days it'll be with the band. We'll change the other stuff. Medicine ball, single arm push off. So single arm here, do a push, and then ah, boom, finish. I don't have medicine balls. Fine, do a T push up. Make it happen. I'm giving you strategies. You don't have an exercise? Hmm, what could be a, sub, a substitute? Something I can do really easy. Look for easy, 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 and then put volume behind it. All right? So staggered stance, bent over, single arm row, single arm push off, triple threat. These are the three exercises on the stability ball for the hamstrings. Uh, single leg lateral uh, wall slide. I don't have a wall. All right? Lateral reaching lunges. What's a wall slide? A ball here, okay? Uh, 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 uh. You know, for cutting, right? Duh, duh, duh. For lateral, I don't have that. You have a wall. Yeah, I have a wall. There it is. Boom, boom. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. Who cares? Give me 20. Because 20 so-so's is better than nothing. And we'll perfect it over the next week. Plus, we got three sets. Yeah, first set, not so good. Second set will be better. Third set, it'll start resembling something that's useful. Okay? Remember, we're not looking for perfection. We're looking for correction, teaching. It's part of what you do. Plus, when, when, you, when you're met with challenges like this, oh, I love this program, but I don't have kettlebells. I love this, but I don't have that. And you're gonna go, all right, what, what are you gonna do? Well, I cannot do the exercise. I'll turn it into a biplex. Good choice. Now, instead of three triplexes, we'll do four quad, uh, biplexes. Fantastic. Or you know what? Uh, I don't have a medicine ball, but I have a step. Is a step good? Well, what do you mean a step good? Yeah, I've got a clean step. Can I have, can I have one hand on the step and one hand on the step? Hell yeah, you can have it. If, if the conditions are right, the step is clean, you got space for the body, yeah. So it starts teaching you how to think. 
Okay, remember, programs are good, but where you really learn is, not, is, is, is implementing the program because you're going to have to make adjustments. You're going to go, oh, it's a beautiful program, and the kids can't do the exercise, and you don't know why they can't do it. You're going, I can't believe you can't do it. Well, believe it because time is a running, and they can't do it. So what are you going to do? Have a bunch of epileptic seizures running around the place? Or are you going to say, you know what, why don't we just run? Because apparently skipping is beyond your capability. How about just jogging? Let's get you guys moving. You know what? You can't screw up a single leg hop. So just, you know what? For now, hop. Hop, hop. Just single leg, single leg. Just get them moving. All right? How about if we hop, 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 and then bound and hop, hop, hop? Can you do that? Okay, look, guys. Skipping is hop, bound, hop, bound, hop, bound. And maybe you teach them. Maybe it takes you two weeks. But meanwhile, they're hopping. And the hopping is an unbelievable exercise. Hopping short range and then hop long range and see what happens. Okay, so ba uh, basketball, you got four uh, biplexes, you know, uh, reaching lunges, alternating split jumps. You can see this power. Every time you see power, you'll see five plus five. Every time you see hypertrophy, you'll see 10 to 12 reps. Every time you see strength, you'll see five reps, four reps, six reps. So what happens if, if they can do 10 reps? We'll try to make the exercise a little bit more difficult. Raise the legs, lengthen the reach, speed the stuff up, whatever. You know what? Just do 10 reps. Forget about the strength phase. Just do 10 reps. And do six of this one if you can. And you do the best you can. Next year, you will figure out how to make the easy exercises very hard so you can tweak them up and down and, you, and make them whatever you need. Okay, biplex number two, crossover on the medicine ball, crossover push-up, explosive push-up. See it? These are all these, they're biplexes from that cookie cutter. It's all the cookie cutter. Once you practice the cookie cutter, coming here ain't, ain't difficult. You go, oh, I got it. Oh, power complex. Oh, there it is. I can do that. Okay, biplex number three, staggered stance, contralateral compound row to a medicine ball overhead slam. Okay, here, here, here. Ah. Is it perfect? You know, I can find imperfection with that. It's a compound row. Well, it's a lot of posterior chain. This one here works the anterior chain. But, you know, the compound row works the back, and the overhead slam works the back. So are we going to start splitting nails over here and, and, you know, arguing about the stuff? Let's, why don't we just do some good compound rows and explode, explode these little kids? Don't argue about the, well, is it an extensor mechanism chain, but the back, how, what, what proportion? Mm-mm. Biplex number four, abdominals, X-ups. Why? Because it's basketball, and they do a lot of cutting. And if it was soccer, even better. I love those X-ups. And overhead side-to-side uh, uh, -side slams. Pa, pa. It's not the pairing. It's not the biomechanical specificity of the pairing. It's going to be your coaching and the intensity and quality of work. If you just put, if you just slapped a bunch of exercises up there and you coached them and you inspired them and you kept them safe, I'm telling you right now, you'd make better athletes. And would, these, would, would this program be better than the program you would select? You don't know. Now, is this program planned? Yes. Does it follow, like, like Nick says, you know, if you're going to stay in your lane, your stuff is limited. If you're going to stay in the lane of normalcy, well, then, then your stuff is limited. It's not like you can do one set of 1,000 reps. That's just not normal. But if you stay in your hypertrophy, power, power endurance, your standard stuff, it's a lane. There's not much new you can do. So if you just said, okay, let me choose any one, two, three, four, let me 80, I'm going to choose eight exercises, the ones that I really like. And they could be three-leg exercise, one chest, four back. It doesn't matter. I'm going to choose them. But you know what? I'm going to coach it up, and I'm going to get the best of these kids. I'm going to be that movie. The kids are going to be high-fiving when they're done. They're going to be sweating. Everybody's going to be safe, and I'm going to be able to make it more, harder and harder and harder and more and more and more over four weeks. I'm telling you right now, that is better than this very well-thought-out program, half-assed. So then again, is it the program, or is it, like Nick calls it, the delivery system? As long as you're not dropping them off five-foot boxes and blowing their knees, it's about taking something simple, and the delivery system has to be on point, where you want those kids want to do it. 
They're happy to do it. You see, they're giving you everything they got because they're so happy to be there. You inspire them. You do that, I'm telling you right now, the programming, you can just about get anything from YouTube and make it happen. But if you do something that's well organized and you're all that as a coach, now we're really cooking with gas. Okay, MMA circuit, this is just a very simple way because I couldn't, in a book, explain all of MMA in our theory. So what did I do? Look at, I just gave them a progression. I gave them made exercise, you know, two sets of 15 seconds each, two sets of 20, two, three sets of 20, three sets of 25, done. When you go three sets of 25 or you're just running it down the, down the pike here, you know, you got your round. You got your round. Just go through all of that. Bang, 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 bang. Done. Here's your rest period. So you're up to three rounds, okay? You can do them like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. When you do them in what we call um, succession. Succession means you finish all three of one. Then you go to all three of two. Then you go, you, so you, you do them. At, versus sequencing, it's a big difference. When we do them in succession, we call it work, uh, working compound, uh, components. Pods. Huh? Pods too. Like the, yeah, but the, the pods is when we, we clump components together in, into situationals. So let's say we have three of these to, to um, get a situation where I'm going to teach you how to rest. When, so I get you really tired, the legs really tired. I burpee you a gazillion times. I take the legs away from you. I hit you with a Versa climber. Now you don't know what your name is. And now I get after you 30 seconds. That's a pod. But it's a situational. But if I'm going to do three of these, then three of these, these are, three of these, these are called, that's called training in components. If I go like this, then it's a circuit. So you do this one, as soon as you're done with that one, that one, as soon as you're done with that one, that one. Boom, and this is how you get somebody. That, uh, that's approximately five minutes. So I, all I did was a bunch of exercises that I could substantiate as something that looks like something in a fight, and if they don't look exactly, they've got a mechanism of something that's in a fight, put them together. At first, it doesn't matter the order, at first. Because if you, if you do all that in five minutes, you're going to get in shape no matter what the order. When you start working with fighters, then you can put them in, in fighting sequence. Okay, comes out. What do I want to do? I want to establish my, my striking and move around. So you do a lot of your striking and moving around early. Then I want to take them down. Then you do a couple of takedowns, a couple of deadlifts like you're up against the fence. Boom. Then when you're down, what are you doing? Okay, hey, he get lands on top of me. We're doing metabolic abs. And then I turn them around and I go ground and pound. And then we go here. Boom, boom, boom. So you kind of put them in a sequence and you can do that and you get more specialized, then you're doing pods, you're doing situationals. Which, now I'm gonna start experimenting with circuits versus situationals, I might do both, or I might go to situationals. Because situationals, I think it's much more, you can get more reps at something. A circuit is just, you know, a circuit is just a bunch of stuff and maybe sequentially you can get it where you pre-fatigue the legs and then you make them kick. You pre-fatigue the hands and you make them do this. You pre-fatigue the body and then you make them move. Like they're, they're, they're moving, they're moving, they're staying sharp, moving to, to burn out the 30 seconds left. Or they're behind. You gotta knock them out. Ground and pound, finish them. So we put the ground and pound at the end when they're done and it's here 50 punches. Got it? So there's some different ways you can go about that. But they don't know and I don't have space for that in the book. So the easiest way, boom. Done. And that, versus nothing, or that versus just lifting, or that versus just sparring and beating the piss out of them, that's better. That's a lot better. Conditioning like that beats sprints on, um, on the treadmill. You know, uh, our boy yesterday, um, that's what he does. He was supposed to train out of here. He never, um, over him. That really nice guy, I like over him. He came here, he was supposed to, he had already a camp, already had his apartment rented, wherever he's gonna go. He goes, man, I like your style, I like what you talk about. I took him out there, did a couple of things. He goes, wow, okay, you know, I'll, I'll come back for the, another camp. And you know, he's, he lives in uh, Miami Beach, so it's very hard for him to get over here. And whatever, maybe, never happened. Yesterday, he got tired. He won every round, but he was slowing down towards the end. 
and fatigue makes cowards of us all. He got a little fatigued, got a little laxed, in comes the bomb, the rest is history. You know? But that's what he likes to do. He says he does his own conditioning. I go, what do you do for conditioning? I do intervals on the treadmill. I'm going, Daddy, as soon as you clinch, uh, up against with that guy, he was clinching all five rounds. I go, D -d 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 that run ain't going to do nothing. As soon as I wrap my arms around that upper body and I start doing this to your wrist, and you got to go here, and then you're in here, and all of this is there, and you can't breathe, I go, sprinting 300s ain't going to help you. You got to do some isometric stuff here. You got you to gotta hold on. So I don't know. You know, I don't know if he changes his cardio or what, but it was unfortunate what happened yesterday. I really like the guy. But anyways, um, this, is, this is cardio. And this leads us to specificity of training. Cardio and proprioception is very specific. So if I balance you, it doesn't mean that you're better surfing. Because the balance on surfing is different than the balance static. When you're balancing surfing, you, you, the momentum of the wave, the position of the, um, of the board, the, biomecha the mechanics of the board, and the hydrodynamics already balance you, okay? So you use that balance, just like you use speed to balance on a bike. So that balance is learning how to use physics, all right, to balance and do things. The static balance here is not the same. So the proprioception is, this, is different. So you can't, one won't transfer the other. I'm telling you, I tried. It doesn't transfer, all right? Cardio, you can have an incredible cardio base. And you hear, let's do, you know, five miles so they can get a cardio base. Five miles gives you a cardio base for five miles. It doesn't give you a cardio base for wrestling. Why? Because the demand of wrestling is an isotonic, isometric type of cardio that's needed. Running is different. So you take a wrestler and you have him play basketball and he's dead inside of 15 minutes. But you take a basketball player and you put him on the wrestling mat and you, and you constrict him a little bit so he's got to move and now he's got to breathe while this is tight and he's dead in 15 minutes. Both cardio, both cardio, different cardios. Okay? So this is cardio for MMA.